Good evening. I am so excited to be able to talk with you today about my summer, thank you, um, working with Maine Audubon's Project Puffin. This is a picture of me living out on one of the islands with the birds that I was on all summer, and that's definitely bird poop on my head. I just, that's fairly par for the whole of the summer, and I just like combed my hair, which is a big thing because it's pretty dirty out there. Project Puffin is a program started by Steve Kress in 1973, and originally he was looking to restore puffins to the Gulf of Maine. They're plentiful worldwide, um, but he wanted to bring them back to here because they had disappeared. Since then, his methods have been translated to all kinds of different bird species all over the world. And that's where I came in. I actually didn't work with puffins over the summer. I worked with terns instead. Um, I was stationed on four different islands off of the coast of Maine, and I worked with four different species of terns. I knew what a tern was, because I'd taken an ornithology class, but there are four different species, and I couldn't tell them apart, and I was so stressed out to begin with. <laughs> but then you get there, and the most spectacular part of the summer was the degree to which you get to know these birds and the people that you're working with. Um, I absolutely fell in love with terns over the summer, which is a crazy thing to say. Um, this is a picture of uh, when we first arrived, the birds aren't yet nesting, so they're just courting. So we trapped a couple of the adults so that we can band them. They wear like a little ankle, ankle bracelet, it's very lightweight, and they have a unique ID number on them. So if I were to band a bird, they're migratory, um, and you were to see my bird that I had banded, you could call in that number and tell me that you'd seen the bird, which is amazing. So once they nested, we walked the entirety of the island to do a census. We counted every single nest, tiptoeing around all of them, being so careful not to step in any of them, um, and we counted every single egg in those nests. We doubled the number of nests, and that gave us an idea of how many birds we had. And then the magic began. Clearly, I know that birds come out of eggs. Clearly, everybody knows that, but I had never seen it happen before. And I remember the first time I saw a hatchling, and I was, like, I lost my mind. It was this tiny thing, and it was, <laughs> it was so perfect and so small and so alive, and I could not believe that it had come out of something that you could easily mistake for a rock. <laughs> so, of course, we studied the chicks as well. Um, every chick we have is banded. You can see a little band down there. And seeing these chicks grow up, you know which ones they are because you banded them through their entire life cycle was one of the things that absolutely enchanted me about my summer. Of course, we're doing research this whole time. It's real work. Um, one of the most important things we do is our feeding studies. So you mark the chicks with a, with a marker so you can tell them apart. And then you sit there and you watch. And we're watching for all kinds of different things. So which parent comes in with what kind of food? If it's fish, what kind of fish? How long is the fish? How many of them are there? Which chick gets the fish? Which chick actually eats it? Because sometimes they fight. How long does the parent stay there? I, they told us this over, um, like during the orientation portion, and I was like, there's no way I'll ever get it. But you spend three hours times two or three times a day in these blinds, and you watch and you get to know these birds so, so well. Usually, if you're walking around in the colony, they get very they're excellent parents, and they'll like dive on you and peck you and um, throw poop at you, and they'll scream. It's awful. But they calm down a bunch when you're in the blinds, and you get to see these little personalities emerge that I didn't actually know birds had, and I feel so bad for not realizing. This is um, John Herbert Dillinger, the chick on the right. We <laughs> named it. He was an A1 chick, which means he's an only child, and he was a total rascal. What a spoiled little brat. Um, but this was a bird that I'd known. I had banded, and I watched him eat and grow. And then one day, he fledged, which means he just kind of picked up and flew away. And I was like, oh my goodness, I just saw a little life happen, and it was so much like mine. <laughs> um, I should also talk a little bit about our accommodations, because everyone's super interested. It's exactly what it sounds like. Backwoods camping on an island in Maine was incredible, the most like indulgent summer I think I've ever spent. Um, and I think this was the first time that I felt quite so connected to place and to nature. Um, I knew when the tides were, I knew what the birds were doing when they were upset, and it really did become a home which I never would have imagined. This is a picture, picture of our research tent, and I picked it specifically because it looks so warm and inviting. We spent a ton of time um, entering data and 
doing all sorts of number cr number crunching and coding and things like that. And the one person that I was on the island with and I did all of that together in a little home that we built. We, oh, we do eat on the islands. Everyone's worried about that. We go to the grocery store bi-weekly. We like have a boat um, <laughs> and we have a propane stove. But we spent so much time in the kitchen shelter and so much time together cooking for each other. This is Aspen. Um, she's in the kitchen shelter at Jenny Island. And she and I spent two weeks together on Jenny Island off of Harpswell. And she's one of the most important people um, or she's become one of the most important people to me. She's an amazing, amazing woman, and I so appreciate getting the chance to meet her. And as the same thing can be said for SJ, with whom I spent two weeks off the coast of um, Portland. She's releasing an adult turn here, and this brings me into the whole, like, oh, do I really belong in this presentation portion? So I got to thinking. We're talking about migrations, and we've got migratory birds. <laughs> and <laughs> the thing about birds is that they don't see borders and they don't see boundaries and the effort to protect birds is a worldwide thing. Project Puffin is an international organization now. Um, but of course on a more personal note, I was so excited to be accepted to vet school because I want to see lives, like the lives that I saw here and because I want to connect with people, like the people I connected with here. And this summer was like a coming together of everything that has been important to me and our articulation of those, those drivers and those passions all in a place that I'd never been before that I absolutely fell in love with. 